Hi there, in this video we will be looking at binary dependent variables model and also it's also called by the way a limited dependent variable models and I'll explain you the reason for why this is so. Now what is different this time? Now so far the dependent variable y has been continuous. If you've been watching my videos of, or attending my lectures you will notice that the, we've been using continuous variable models or or models with the dependent variables that take continuous values. So this includes SAT scores, fertility rate, murder rate, fatality rates, and all this, or time series data, for example, the inflation rate, and so on and so forth. These variables are continuous in nature in the sense that they take uh, any value uh, without a limit. Of course, there is a given boundary limit, but we usually do not look at that uh, aspect of the data. Uh, there's always maximum and minimum given in the sample. However, well, what if the values or the variable is binary? In other words, the variable takes only two values, one and zero. So say that the y is equal to getting into college or not. Say the y takes only one, two values, that is uh, one if a person gets into college or zero if the person gets doesn't get into college, for example, yeah? So the, in these cases, uh, the, the regression model will not be uh, interpreted in the same way as we, in, this, in the usual way as we have been interpreting on the OLS assumptions. Remember, these, these betas measure the gradient of the line, things like this, yeah? So this won't be the case under this type of modeling. Now, in these models, why can be uh, in the y will be only a binary variable or dichotomous variable, for example, that takes two values. But x can be any value, any variable that can be uh, any continuous or binary or uh, other type of variables. So there are two more examples below this first bullet point. You can have a look at that, please. But uh, I hope you got the point here, what we're looking at now, in looking forward. So we'll, uh, I will explain this uh, topic the using an example from data or actual data collected in 1990 in the greater Boston area. This data contains 2,380 observations. Uh, also, these are 2,380 individuals uh, mortgage decisions. They uh, applied for mortgage in the Boston area bank uh, at the Boston at Boston area banks, uh, and they. These individuals either got mortgage or they refused. So the the main uh, research question in this looking forward in this uh, series is then um, uh, is the de is the uh, decision to grant a mortgage or not depend is dependent on uh, say income or what is what's the what's the, let's say what is the main variable or factor that determines the decision to grant or accept mortgage, for example, yeah? or grant or uh, deny a mortgage. So, in, in, it, in that, I hope you, I described the uh, context now for the, uh, for the uh, problem. In that case, let's define the variables. Now, uh, I mean, hope that the context is clear to you. Now, the dependent variable in this model will be the, whether the mortgage is denied or accepted. So that's uh, application in this case, that means the application. So if the uh, individual was denied a mortgage or their, their application was denied, then that's a one. So the value takes one. If it's accepted, it was accepted, I mean, the value is zero. The independent variables, which are actually variables, again, actual variables, which are actual values of these individuals, is income, wealth, employment, status, other loans, property, and so on and so forth, and, and the race of applicant. This is something we'll look at later. Now, as a natural starting point, let's look at the uh, population regression model and introduce it. Now here, yi is not a continued variable as we had before. It is basically a binary variable, taking one or zero, Beta 0 and beta 1 are coefficient estimates of population regression. Model and xi is the variable of the independent variable that can be continuous or uh, dichotomous, plus the ui, the usual error term, population error term in this case. Now, since we just said that the uh, y is a binary variable, 
the interpretation of beta one is not the usual way. It's is not done in the usual way. It chance now. It's not equal to the delta y over delta x formula. It's not the gradient anymore. I should say. So it's not the rise over run. In other words, yeah. So we'll look at that in a minute. Not explain why it's not, and also. Uh, the meaning of fitting a uh, fitted line or the population regression line is different from before. It's now uh, not anymore a simple OLS model, it's a probability, linear probability model. So, given that the uh, y is a binary variable, it actually uh, uh, reflects the probability values rather than the uh, actual or predicted y values. We'll look at that later as well. So, what the meaning of the fitted line is different than what we had before and also uh, fitted probabilities or predicted probabilities I should say y hats mean uh, something else other than binary outcomes remember y takes 0 and 1 if we were to interpret it as before we should be predicting 0 or 1 as an outcome natural outcome of this uh, regression model so in other words if you insert beta 0 beta 1 into it and then calculate the uh, uh, why are I using the uh, value from xi? You should get either 1 or 0, yeah? But then it appears you can get anything between 0 and 1 and sometimes even more than 1 or less than 0. So uh, we'll look at these special cases but then for now what does it mean to have something between 0 and 1 instead of just 1 and 0? So we'll look at that as well. Now. Now in this prob probability, linear probability model, the predicted value of y is basically the predicted probability that y takes a value 1, which is denied in this uh, example that we're looking at, and the beta 1 is the change in the predicted probability uh, given a unique change in x, or its associated, or associated change in x, for example, yeah? in some books that's the word used. So, beta 1 is the probability uh, or change in the probability uh, predicted probability I should say uh, given the unit change in x here is the brief math which makes it clear to you why this is the case um, why are we looking at why uh, why are we looking at the case of y given x uh, given one in this case instead of leaving it as uh, as any predicted value. Remember, we, we, we mentioned that the y takes only 0 and 1, so keep that in mind for now, and it becomes clear in a minute. So, in a linear probability model given uh, as follows, and uh, the expected value then will be, in this case, conditional expected value because it's a binary variable. Remember, it's a binary variable that y takes uh, only two values 0 and 1, x mean then from the binary. Uh, with using the probability uh, 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 probability theory assum uh, assumptions or methods, remember the expected value of the y a variable that takes two, two values one and zero is the the value the value the, the the value that this variable takes times the probability of that value occurring. In this case, usually would be conditional probability because we're looking at the regression model here. So, actual value times the probability of y taking 1 given x plus the actual observation 0 times the probability uh, of y taking a, a 0 value given the x. And given that this pro uh, uh, product is 0, we will have the probability that y takes 1 given x then. So, this is the outcome. So, uh, from this what comes up is that the expected value of y is the probability value or the probability that uh, y is equal to 1 given x. Now further going forward now, so this explains why the, uh, what the interpretation or the uh, sort of meaning of this model given the context. Yeah? Uh, so going forward now assume that the expected value of ui given x size is equal to 0 false. This is a strong assumption remember for any value of xi, our errors are expected to be zero, but then we will have to assume that it holds, then the, then the expected value of y i given xi is basically the expectations operator, and in the brackets we have the usual linear model here, we just, what did we do here, we just replaced y i's, 
or plug that into here and what comes out is that the expectation if this is true then this is the outcome here remember beta 0 is the constant plus x1 expected value of x1 oh, sorry beta 1 is uh, beta 1 and this is constant and expected value of x is just the xi itself but this is 0 here this is 0 so uh, what's next well this boils down to this whole uh, mathy part boils down to this conclusion that the probability of y equaling to 1 is then given x equal to the uh, beta 0 plus beta 1 x i so this is the regression line model so this is the uh, probability model as a result that's why we call it a uh, uh, linear probability model given this result that we just achieved now uh, predicted values are then or predicted value is just a probability even again the outcome we have just uh, achieved earlier or derived earlier so y hat uh, in, the, in the context of regression I should say expected value of y given x is basically probability of y taking a value x given x yeah and in the when we want to predict then the, we always uh, uh, sort of start the sentence as predicted probability that y takes y takes one given x for one yeah so we, it's important to put the notations correctly here because then in this case it's the predicted value of uh, of this uh, y given a uh, specific observation right it takes a value one here this is the expected value of the variable itself y yeah it's just the variable so now start doing here. And so beta 1 is a, then in this case this given this uh, uh, assumptions and outcome beta 1 is a change in probability that y takes uh, a value 1 for a unit change in x so we just uh, mentioned that as well earlier in the previous slide and this is the uh, this is the simple uh, what you call this uh, a gradient formula but not any more gradient in this case notice that although it's a gradient in a sense but it, 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 it is a probability linear model uh, estimated beta 1 basically so probability that y takes 1 uh, given that the x changed by delta x minus so basically in this side not x change but just given the x which is basically equal to x plus change in x this is the let's say this is a unit change so we have the original value plus a change in the change value or the extra additional value we added so that's the change in x minus probability that y takes one given the original value x yeah so over delta x that gives us the value beta one so that's the that's the mathematical formulation of this uh, sentence here that we looked at earlier now uh, all these abstract concepts won't make sense if we do not look at an example if we do not apply this, this uh, concept, uh, concepts in this data set. Now, example here is the mortgage uh, data. So we're looking at the mortgage denials as the dependent variable and as the ratio of debt payments to income as the uh, independent variable in this model. And we, we have down here is a subset of the original 2380 uh, observations so this is just subset uh, of 127 units plotted here uh, x axis is pi ratio so it's the payments over income so debt payments over income ratio of an individual so if an individual earns let's say uh, 100,000 a year and monthly payments they make say or oh, in this case uh, this will be annual uh, given the monthly payments so that let's say uh, payments are about 300 or 30,000 a year for example yeah that would be a huge amount but let's assume that's the case then pi whether it's annual or monthly will give us the fraction of uh, income that's going towards the uh, payment to uh, the payment to for the loan to the bank yeah pi ratio is basically measuring the payment to a uh, fraction of income that's going to uh, loan payments monthly or annual payments now 
the y-axis is the deny uh, var uh, variable merge, merge denials and remember the, the y y-axis is a dichotomous or binary variable so takes one or zero and if uh, the value is zero then the mortgage application is accepted if value is one mortgage accept mortgage application is denied so notice this now these are individuals each dot here is an individual and Plenty of people's mortgages were denied and plenty of people's mortgages were accepted but the important thing is that clustering so the acceptance accepted mortgage individuals with accepted mortgages have a cluster uh, between a PI ratio of uh, 0.15 and 0.45 so uh, lower PI ratios means or well, acceptance uh, of your accept, uh, application higher PI ratios mean essentially denial of your application and that makes sense you know the banks usually look at how much debt you already have and how much of your income is already going into uh, into payment of debt existing debt so if you uh, if you're if you're already paying for example for this individual if you're already paying 70 above more than 70 percent of income to pay the debt now uh, is very uh, very low probability we will, we will have a very low probability of getting any mortgage at all because then we will now have nothing to eat right to, to consume when I think, and, and how do you how do you buy your food for example if you uh, borrow a more mortgage or more debt or this guy here is about 60 percent of income is being paid and more uh, already in existing debt so there's only 40 percent left of their income well uh, that goes to you know food, clothing, and so on and so forth. So the likelihood of uh, probability of getting a loan, a mortgage approved, will be uh, higher if their uh, what you call this the uh, PI ratios are lower. Yeah. So these people have lower PI ratios, and they they they, they their acceptance, their mortgage applications were approved. Okay. So that and this blue line here is the uh, pro, uh, linear probability model line it's the uh, popular uh, in this case fitted line here and notice this it doesn't actually describe well or fit well to the data so you have this huge data here and we, we look at deviation here from the line so according to this fitted line if if someone has a pi ratio of 0 0.4 their uh, predicted value for denial, it should be somewhere between 0 0.4 and 0 0.6. Yeah, that is that is basically you know, what you call is not possible. Uh, that's first thing. Second is the deviation here from you know the, their actual uh, value is actually hit sitting on the unit line here, while the predicted value here. So this is not a good fit, basically, is it? No, it's not right. So that's one thing about this. We'll come back to that later. But anyway, but uh, for now, as as an as an as an uh, exposition case here. So hope you understood this, uh, the 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 context now. So what is the uh, fitted line, the fitted model here? So let's look at the fitted model. Now using the full HMDA data set. Now the this here, this graph here was. Uh, for only 127 observations, so these dots make up of make up the 127 observations. But this model here is for the full set, so that's 2,380 observations here. Now, the linear probability model tells us that the coefficient for beta zero is negative, which implies the line cross the y-axis somewhere here. So that's an interesting case so that means that you get a negative probability if you have uh, no PI ratio that's interesting isn't it when you actually don't have a debt your probability of acceptance is negative or denial is negative. that's interesting so we'll come back to that later why this is the case and why that is the disadvantage of this model and the uh, beta one which is the uh, uh, prob uh, the the change in the probability, the predicted probability given a unit change in x is basically 0 0.6 uh, 
pi ratio. Yeah, so this is the coefficient estimate for pi ratio. We will interpret it in a minute. So the, let's do an exercise here. So for a person who has, uh, what's the predicted probability of denial given the uh, given that the pi ratio is 0 0.3? So about 30% of their income go into paying debt. Well, that's PR. It's we we would simply put y equal y hat equal to this, but we have to get into writing it more formally structured way. So P probability that uh, the uh, mortgage application or denial equals one, uh, given the PI ratio is zero point three, is equal to that beta of zero, which is from here, plus zero point sixty. 60, uh, sorry, 6 or 4 times the PI ratio for that individual, 0 0.15 is the outcome as a result. So given the 0 0.3, uh, given the uh, PI ratio, the probability of uh, uh, deny equal to 1 is basically 0 0.15. So a probability of uh, mortgage disapproval is 0 0.15 so there is a less probability of disapproval in this case right so given the given the person's income is 0 0.3 oh sorry pi ratio is 0 0.3 the probability of getting a denial maybe it's a better way of explaining it getting a denial uh, on your mortgage application is 0 0.15 it's a small probability yeah and not one thing is that this Given the full set, we have a very statistically significant uh, significant uh, outcome here. The beta one is statistically significant. So this is a this is interesting, isn't it? We we holding everything as constant. We are basically we haven't yet included anything in the model. Remember, it's only PI ratio. But then um, the bank's decision to grant or deny a, a mortgage is basically based on. Uh, not only this PI ratio, but also some other variables usually, yeah? The, uh, the uh, work pattern or credit history, for example, or they maybe raise as well in some cases, but not necessarily, but we still have to hold it constant. Gender, number of kids in the family, so on and so forth. So, but given the simple model, the probability of denial here for a person with a PI ratio of 0 0.3 is basically very low. Now. What if we want to calculate the effect of change in PI ratio rather than just predict the value? Yeah. So in that case, if, if calculating the effects is is using for calculating the effects, we need to use two values of PI ratio. Say we take a person uh, a person with a 0 0.3 and a person with a 0 0.4 value, or just two values. Let's assume they have two values. So if let's say my uh, PI ratio increased from 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. What uh, what's the probability of denial then? Well, probability of denial being equal to one, given the PI ratio uh, equal to zero point four, which is the uh, uh, the uh, higher value here, is equal to zero point twenty one. So it, the probability is now increasing. What's this probability is now increasing, given that the debt? Or in this case, I could expect this to be. I could simply. I mean, if you've done finance, if you have done finance, there's something called leverage. So if my leverage increases, if I have more debt, and and greater part of my income is going into paying the debt, and that's I'm, I'm highly leveraged, yeah, debt leveraged. So as the leverage increases, individual leverage increases, the probability of denial will also increase of increase for for mortgage in this given the data that we have. So uh, so what's the probability in uh, uh, change in uh, change in probability of denial when my uh, uh, PI um, ratio increased from 0 to 0 0.04. Then that's the difference between this value and that value. So here it is. So uh, the effect on the probability of denial of increase in PI ratio from that value to this value is then the increase in the probability by about six percentage points. Wow, that's a huge increase, isn't it? That's a huge increase. Oh well, we will, we will see uh, uh, in the following few. Uh, uh, slides after the linear problem model, we will come up with other models and see what this value actually means. Uh, well, it, it may change given that there is a lot of scope for omitted variable y bias. So 
six percent in percentage point increase in the denial is I suppose is is huge. But let's let's see what, what outcome is because this is a series of videos on various nonlinear models. So one of them is the linear probability model, which is the introduction. Right, so let's move on and as I said earlier, they, we just had a look at this simple model and we basically assumed that the omitted variable bias wasn't a problem, but in fact it would be a problem if we do not include uh, important vari demographic variables and race and other variables, marital status. Yeah? So now we will do a multivariable, multivariable model with the deny equaling to the beta 0 plus beta 1 for the pi ratio and beta 2 for the uh, gender ratio. Uh, sorry, the race ratio. So we know what pi ratio is. This is a continuous variable, but now this black means basically a variable black takes one if person is or the applicant is black, otherwise otherwise zero or white, let's say, or, or maybe any other. In the uh, the data set, I think it was white as the next category. But we assume it's just black for one and zero for other races. Now. Using this information, what's that? This is still highly significant estimate. This is also highly significant estimate. So um, we can think of this uh, mortgage application. So this Boston area bank is to be uh, to be. Well, I don't want to call it them racist, but we'll have some sort of. So to, to an extent, they are they they look at race as well because this is a significant value. Uh, we'll see how much effect uh, the race has on, on the decision, but for now what we know is that there is a significant effect of race on the decision to approve or approve a mortgage or deny a mortgage. So let's estimate for black applicant with a PA ratio of 0, 3, the pro predicted probability. So probability of deny given the x's, the x values that we have looked at earlier uh, uh, are that the this is the beta 0 plus the coefficient times 0 0.3 plus the uh, the uh, the black person taking on so 25 percent wow that's huge 25 percent if they have low score but if they are black that is the probability of denial now let's look at the white or other applicant PI ratio is equal to 3, so they have the same PI ratios, so they are two individuals, one is black, one is, is white, but their race is different, so then probability denial being equal to 1 is then 0 0.07, that's a huge difference, that, you see, this is significant, but also difference in the probabilities given the race is also uh, is, is huge. That's about 17.7 .7 percentage points. Wow, that's huge. So, so the uh, uh, the black people will have 17.7 percent higher probability of denial compared to the white people in their applications. That's huge, isn't it? That's huge. Oh well. So let's move on. Yeah, this is actual data. But then don't forget. We only have what two variables here. Uh, what well, if we include many other variables? You know, credit score, for example, past history, for example, whether the person is crim uh, has been uh, uh, has had a criminal penalty on them or uh, some other some other issues that we have done in the past, for example. If we include this, this probably will be lower. I assume because that right now it's probably absorbing some of the variation that the others other values that we have omitted which are correlated with the race yeah so this means observing the, the effects of others now not so so that as soon as we include the black what we have is that this value has come down too right earlier it was mimicking the effect of gen, uh, race as well so just like that coefficient estimate this might as well change if we couldn't mean more and more so effect maybe Maybe, maybe different than what we have just seen so far. Now, linear probability models um, have its at their advantages and disadvantages. Um, 
advantages are that they are simple to estimate and to interpret. So I'm missing uh, skipping this. This is something that you can do later. Simple to estimate and to interpret. Well, we just seen that in fact it is. Yeah, uh, inference is the same as for multiple regression. Yeah, but then you have to be very very careful with this uh, estimation or with these models because the uh, errors will not be common stochastic. So we have to. Um, uh, estimate the models using heteroscedastic robust standard errors and uh, all software uh, packages include that option in your estimation so check for this first and the important point is that the disadvantages linear probability model basically uh, assumes or predicts the probabilities for a given change in x as the same for all values of x but that's not the case because probability of denial will change uh, as the let's say PI ratio changes yeah so if I go back while this may have this line may have a constant gradient and, and then as a result the probability values could be constant or the same but someone's if someone's uh, PI ratio goes from 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 well they will have a Great, a great probability of denial than someone whose values rise from 0 0.2 to 0 0.3, right? So this uh, linear probability model as such is not that uh, accurate in uh, predicting your uh, probability of denials of more or probability of any outcome. And also linear probability model predicts that the probabilities can be or predicted probabilities can be less than zero or greater than one. So if I go back, you notice the line. This line has values above uh, above one for uh, individuals whose PI ratio in ratios are zero point seven or above, for example. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And the uh, values are negative here in this case. You see. So um, and remember um, the uh, values taking one and zero. Yes, deny takes only one and zero. So we only focusing on in this case probability of deny in that the y equal one. And so in this according to this model, the values can be more than one. Right. So these are the disadvantages that we need to uh, overcome. And that's why we don't usually use linear probability the models. So then the econometrists came up with uh, probit and logit models or regressions. So these are for next videos now. See you in the next video.